Everybody wants a quick fix, and I'm gonna give you some scientifically proven shortcuts to supercharge your immune system. And it doesn't involve crystals, detox juices, or coffee enemas. And if you're wondering who the hell I am to give you health advice, well, I know it may not look it, but I'm actually a doctor. I'm a surgeon in the NHS. Your immune system is an incredibly complex network of hundreds of different cell types working together to protect your body from badness, basically. But the idea of boosting your immunity is misleading. An overactive immune system can lead to problems like allergies, autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis and all sorts. But there's one food group which can make a big difference that 90% of us in the UK aren't getting enough of. Fiber supports the health of your gut microbiome, the collection of microbes in your gut that help break down your food, remove toxin and train your immune system to fight off infections. These gut bugs act as a primary defense barrier against diseases and produce important vitamins like vitamin K, which support efficient functioning of your immune system. And while we're on the subject of diet, let's talk about what you're washing it down with. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you really want to hack your immune system, you're gonna need to cut back on the booze. Sorry, I don't make the rules. But it's become pretty clear that alcohol can suppress your immune system and reduce the numbers of good microbes in your gut. Alcohol can also leave you feeling dehydrated, which isn't gonna do your immune system any favors. So as well as staying hydrated, you can also get your cellular soldiers moving by doing a bit of exercise and moving yourself. Just 20 to 30 minutes of vigorous exercise a day reduces your risk of getting sick by about 20%. And even going for a 30 minute walk can make a massive difference. After all that movement, you're probably feeling like an ice cold shower, right? Okay, maybe not. But people who take cold showers are 30% less likely to call in sick than those who don't. So breaking the bite, even if it's just for 30 seconds, might be worth it. Together with diet and exercise, it's also important you're getting enough sleep. And believe me, I know the importance of sleep. As a surgeon, when I'm sleep deprived, I feel rubbish. And I need to get enough sleep for my patients. I know it's not always easy, but sleep increases the efficiency of white blood cell activity and supports the production of antibodies which serve as the body's immunological memory. Now, a positive mindset doesn't mean you have to start meditating and going for runs every morning, although these things certainly help. At the end of the day though, these kinds of lifestyle changes are quite a lot of effort sometimes. Surely there must be a shortcut. Talking of shortcuts, if you go into any health food shop, it's easy to believe there is one, because you're confronted with row upon row of capsules, sprays, gummy sweets, all claiming to boost your immune system. But how much good do these things actually do, really? Vitamin C is involved in lots of important bodily functions, including the production and activity of white blood cells. But, and it's a big but, most people in wealthy countries get all the vitamin C they need from their diet. Even a single kiwi contains more than 100% of the stuff. Our bodies can't store vitamin C either, so any excess is just gonna end up being flushed down the loo, just like all that money you spent on the supplements. But while there's very little evidence to suggest that taking vitamin C supplements will stop you from getting sick, if you've already got a cold, however, common cold. taking them regularly can reduce how long it lasts, if only by about 8%. In other words, you could shave about 10 hours of sniffles off a five-day cold. Think of how many tissues you could save. But before you go popping a Barocca and vitamin C for just half a day's less snot, taking too much vitamin C can lead to some serious health problems like diarrhea, nausea, and kidney stones. For this reason, it's not recommended you have more than 200 milligrams a day. Some of these vitamin C supplements have been combined with another micronutrient, zinc. Zinc is a mineral that helps our cellular soldiers bind to and attack infected cells. If taken within the first 24 hours of developing a cold, zinc supplements can actually make quite a big difference on the length and severity of an infection. A daily dose of zinc has been shown to make recovery from colds three times faster. Feel pretty good too. With 22% less sneezing and half as much coughing. But taking it with vitamin C in one of those fizzy orange tablets isn't gonna cut it. Zinc supplements are only really effective if they're taken as lozenges which you suck at the back of your throat. And you have to take quite a lot of zinc to make a difference, around 80 milligrams a day, which is considerably more than you'd find in most supplements and 10 times more than your daily recommended intake. 
taking more than 80 milligrams can also cause problems, including digestive issues and copper deficiency, which causes anemia and reduces white blood cell count, exactly the opposite of what we want to be doing. Vitamin C and zinc have been marketed as cold crushing cure-alls for decades. And no matter how convincingly they may be advertised, do not use them without having checked with your doctor. There's also a new kid on the block, vitamin D. Vitamin D actually isn't a vitamin. It's a hormone, a steroid hormone that promotes the absorption of calcium in the body. As a result, low levels of vitamin D make you more susceptible to respiratory infections and autoimmune disease. Despite all this, nearly 1 billion people worldwide aren't getting enough of it. Unlike most vitamins, we only get about 10% of our daily vitamin requirements from our diet oily fish, red meat, eggs, and other fortified foods like cereals. But the biggest source of vitamin D is sunshine. This is a problem in countries like the UK, because during the winter in the UK, we don't receive enough UV radiation from the sun to produce all the vitamin D our bodies actually need, which is why the NHS recommends taking 10 micrograms of vitamin D supplements a day between October and March. This is particularly important if you have darker skin, because melanin pigment prevents the little UV light there is from getting through to where it needs to be. As with other vitamins, it's also possible to have too much of a good thing. Overdosing on vitamin D causes dangerous calcium buildups in the body and damages the kidneys and heart. The good news is that if you stick to under 100 micrograms of the stuff, 10 times the recommended daily amount, you're unlikely to have any problems. So it looks like taking vitamin C, vitamin D and zinc might actually do our immune system some good but not one of them is a medical magical bullet. If you really want to look after your body, you need to be taking good care of both your physical and mental health, and that's gonna take some work, sorry, no shortcuts. But the best way to hack your immunity is simply to eat well, exercise, exercise builds good health, stay hydrated, and get enough sleep, the boring stuff. For more health tips with no strings attached, make sure you like and subscribe.